This is the second part of the calculations for the heat diffusion of ice. I've just uh, added the table. So the first thing that we need to do is to realize that um, the heat lost in the calorimeter must equal the heat needed to melt that ice cube plus the heat absorbed by that ice water. Now, to calculate the heat lost in the calorimeter, that's a temperature change or just a change in kinetic energy. And the formula we use for change in temperature, i.e. kinetic energy, is mc delta t. Okay, now since we're losing heat in the calorimeter, we would have like negative mc delta t. The negative sign just means that we've lost heat. Okay, now this should equal the heat needed to melt the ice. Now this is a phase change whenever you have something going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid, liquid to gas, gas to liquid, that's a phase change. And that's a change in potential energy. And the formula we use there is N, uh, change in enthalpy. So N is the number of moles and then the delta H represents the change in enthalpy. Okay, now to that we have to add the heat absorbed by the ice water. Now, again, that's just a change in temperature, so it's just a change in kinetic energy. And the formula we use, again, for change in kinetic energy is mc delta t. Okay, now when we plug our values into this formula, so the heat lost in the calorimeter, well, that's just the water that was in the calorimeter. And the water in the calorimeter had a mass of 84.16 grams. Specific heat capacity of water, we're using 4.19. And the change in temperature was a minus 38, but we have two negatives, like one in front of that equation and one in the change of temperature, so it'll give us a positive value. Okay, I'm omitting any of the units just for simplicity's sakes. Okay, now that should equal the N delta H. And the N is the number of moles that were in that ice cube. So to find the number of moles, we use mass all over molar mass. So the mass of the ice cube was 42.51 grams. The molar mass of H2O is 18.02. Okay, it's two hydrogens plus one oxygen. Okay, we're trying to determine the heat suffusion of ice, so we're not going to plug a value in here. That's the value we are trying to determine via this experiment. Okay, and the next thing we do is we add the heat absorbed as ice water. So we take the mass of the ice cube, which is 42.51 grams. Now the ice cube has melted, so it's turned to water. So the specific heat capacity of water is 4.19. And now the change in temperature of that ice water, so it went from 0 degrees up to 2.1, is just 2.1. Okay, so study that equation a little bit. Make sure you understand everything that's going on. Okay, now we take those uh, values, and we're just going to work them out. Starting from the left, 84.16 times 4.19 times 38 will give us... 13,400 joules. It's actually 13,399.96 and then a few decimals, but if we just round this to three sig figs, we get 13,400 joules. Okay, then we have our equal sign and the 42.51 divided by 18.02 would give us like 2.36 moles and then delta H, which is what we're trying to find. Okay, plus the 42.51 times 4.19 times 2.1 will give us 374 joules. Okay, now at this point, this is just a simple algebra equation. So what we're trying to do is get that delta H by itself. So the first thing we should do is subtract that 374 joules. First, we'll subtract it from the right. And what we do to one side, we've got to do to the other. So we subtract it from the left side. Okay, our net result there will give us uh, 1,326 joules on the left, and that will equal just the 2.36 moles times delta H on the right. Okay, our next step is to divide both sides by that 2.36 moles. Okay, 
do it to the left. And when we do that to the right side, we will just be left with the delta H. Okay, so 13,026 joules divided by 2.36 moles will net us 55 or 5,519.5 joules per mole. That gives us our delta H value. And if we round it to three sig figs and turn it to kilojoules, which we will need for the next step, we would get 5.52 kilojoules per mole for the heat suffusion for ice. Now, the next part on our calculation is we have three trials. So we need to calculate this delta H for each of the three trials. Once we've got the delta H calculated for each of the three trials, we're going to add them all together and then divide by three, and that will give us the average. Okay, and we're going to use that average to calculate our percent error. Now our percent error is equal to our experimental value, so that's the value we found in lab, minus the accepted value, so that's the value you would find in your data booklet, divided by the accepted value, and then times by 100%. Okay, so for my calculations, my accepted val my experimental value was 5.52, and that was kilojoules per mole. The accepted value was 6.01 kilojoules per mole. We subtract those, divide by that accepted value, times it by 100%, and we should get like negative 8.2%. Okay, and it's negative just because my experimental value was less than my accepted. So here I got an experimental value of 5.52, which was a percent error of negative 8.2%. Okay, so you would indicate that in the conclusion of your lab, and then you need to um, discuss the validity of your results. Now, some of the things that you want to discuss, first off, was was the ice cube at zero degrees Celsius? Okay, that, that's the big thing with this lab. Another thing that you might want to discuss was that 6.01 kilojoules per mole, our accepted value, that's at standard temperature and pressure. So again, what does standard temperature and pressure mean? And was the lab at standard temperature and pressure? Okay, other things you might want to discuss was, you know, the quality of your calorimeter, and uh, did you spill any of your water when you were taking your measurements? What about your thermometer? Do you think you had a good thermometer? Those are some of the things that you're going to want to discuss when you talk about the validity of your results.